Hello again, and we are the Zero Waste Initiative team. Today we have a special guest, Emma Lego from the Greenberg Nature Center, who is also the project leader of the Zero Waste Initiative. So, Emma, tell us about your experience and why you're so passionate about the Zero Waste mm -hmm. Initiative. Well, thank you all um, for having me here today to talk about this wonderful program that you all have been such an intricate part of. Um, so the Greenberg Zero Waste Initiative is the brainchild of Supervisor Finer. He wanted a program to educate the community on proper recycling and food waste separation. So I became involved in environmental um, sustainable work in college. I was a member of um, the New York Public Interest Research Group. And um, after college, I worked with some other nonprofits, um, became involved with the Greenberg Nature Center doing volunteer work. And um, with my time with Riverkeeper, which is a, another nonprofit, and they work to protect the Hudson, I learned a lot about how our trash really negatively impacts um, our waterways and our wildlife. And so when the Nature Center um, approached me and asked me to help with this program, um, you know, I know of some other zero waste um, companies who are really trying to get the word out and increase separation throughout the state, but there's not a lot of that down here in Westchester. Oh, wow. um, so it was a great opportunity and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Awesome, thank you. Um, what, what is composting? All right, so compost. Compost is actually um, a naturally occurring process. Um, when you go out into the woods and you look at a, a tree stump that's decaying, you know, you realize that anything that's been organic matter that's alive, when it dies, it decomposes and the nutrients from that matter, you know, come back and they help new life. Um, so composting is when humans take organic food waste as well as yard waste um, or wood-based materials um, and they combine them and they create a material called compost. And so the way this works is you have nitrogen, which are the materials that break down, such as you know your kitchen food waste, your fruits and your vegetables um, and your eggshells, and your, even your grass clippings are those wet, you know, um, nitrogen-filled materials, and you mix those with dry carbon-filled materials, the energy for breaking it down, um, and those include wood chips, um, dead leaves, and oh. you start your pile with a layer of, of dirt and soil so that the insects, the bacteria, the microbes get in there um, and they create heat and they break down the materials um, and eventually the decomposed materials after, you know, it can take a couple months um, of mixing the materials, adding more in, adding water and moisture, um, they create compost and compost is a very valuable material and we add it to garden beds and to soil to make the soil so much richer for any new growth. So that's what composting is. Um, and why do you think composting is essential to do as of now? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as, as populations grow and we produce more waste, um, our food waste is actually a very large percentage of, you know, the household waste that we throw out. And so um, in this movement, we're trying to, you know, teach people that you reduce, you reuse, and you recycle. Well, food can also be recycled. Instead of going into landfills, instead of, you know, ending up being burned, which we'll talk about later when we talk about what we do with our waste in Westchester County, um, you know, when you throw something out, it costs money to get rid of it. But what we can do is take our food waste and create a new product that has value and we save money by not having to buy additional additives for our gardens. Um, you know, so it, it's definitely a way of reusing, lessening the amount that we're, you know, throwing away in the environment and then, you know, creating monetary value. Um, and so at right now, unfortunately, there aren't, you know, commercial facilities, but people can, you know, home compost and do this on a home level. All sounds very interesting. Now, um, what is the current waste management in the town of Greenberg? 
and are there any savings costs or anything like that? Okay. Um, so the town of Greenberg is in Westchester County, yes. correct? And so yeah. Westchester County, there's 43 municipalities and 36 of those municipalities, um, excluding the Northwest Quadrant, are part of a co-op. And this co-op, um, it uses a system called the MRF, the Material Recoveries Facility, that's located in Yonkers, and that's where all of our recycling is taken. Um, and that's a bifurcated system, meaning we do commingled plastics one through seven, glass, metal, and paper or pulp recycling separately. Mm -hmm. um, and all the leftovers, the trash, is taken up to Peekskill, where we have an incinerator. And so this is really cool because we don't use a landfill in Westchester County, right guys? And we were just there yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the MRF um, is how we do recycling with our trash. We burn it and we create thermal energy. We burn it at a temperature of over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and we create a thermal energy that's enough electricity to power 88,000 households annually. Wow, Terrific. wow. amazing. Yeah. Truly amazing. Wow. Um, and so cost saving, it costs about $79 per ton of trash to burn it. Mm. All of these materials that we recycle, plastics one through seven, aluminum, steel, um, corrugated cardboard. They all have a um, have a profit, and so one ton of steel makes a profit of six hundred dollars. One ton of aluminum, our county can sell it to both domestic and international markets mm -hmm. for fourteen hundred dollars a ton. Mm -hmm. Our MRF system creates a profit of six million dollars a year, which then goes back into the co-op of those thirty-six counties mm -hmm. to maintain the facilities, the fleets, the, you know, workers pay for our, you know, very um, sustainable system of waste management. Sweet. All right, so regarding the recycling methods at the MRF, what would you say are some do's and don'ts of, you know, household recycling? All right, so household recycling, um, you know, it's pretty, it's, I think it's really cool and it's really fun, but there are little rules that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so say for commingled recycling, your plastics one through seven, your um, metal and your glass, when you're throwing a bottle away, you're actually supposed to remove the cap. Mm. Um, and so just put the bottle in. Um, for the papers, if you, you can actually put in, you know, a pizza box, but when things have too much grease around them, you should remove those items and put them in the trash. Um, but, you know, one of the key parts is cleaning. So a lot of people, when you go out and you throw your, your recycling out, um, you know, you might just throw it in with a little liquid left in it or your food items, you know, residue in there. It, it's a good idea and it's really helpful to the people who run the facility um, as well as, you know, the finished product to clean your items. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, one of the things that we'll be teaching people at the pool this summer. Right. Well, I mean, I've heard of some uh, issues regarding like throwing out I and mean, recycling straws, recycling plastic utensils, mm -hmm. and recycling plastic bags. Like, how is that? Even peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> Even peanut butter. So peanut butter is a tough item to get out of there. You know, that's what I was saying, though. You can clean, um, but you don't have to get every little thing out. You know, if there's a little peanut butter in there, it's fine. Straws and plastic utensils. So. There are certain items that will jam up the machinery at the materials recovery facility, and plastic utensils, straws are those type of items, so those are non-recyclable. Um, you know, and there are some items that, you know, can't be recyclable, but we are hoping to teach people this summer that after you recycle your commingles, after you recycle your paper products, and after you separate your food compost, what's left to throw out is really minimal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are some household items made of non-recyclable plastic. Styrofoam, unfortunately, isn't recyclable, and that's why it's great to bring reusable mugs with you everywhere and not, you know, buy a styrofoam coffee cup if you can avoid it. Um, you know, those wax-covered soda cups, those unfortunately aren't recyclable, nor are the straws, but those plastic lids are. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, interesting, you know, when people throw that on the recycling, 
It's just because they don't, you know, they've never been told that these specific little items go in certain places. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's our goal this summer is to teach people that, you know, after everything is separated correctly, there's very little left to go in the trash. Mm -hmm. um, and the profit margin from properly separating is so much larger, it'll only get larger if we're putting less and less in the waste. Awesome. So my last question, Emma, is do you think that the community can change its behavior in proper waste management habits and how? Well, I think, you know, the first thing is education. I think that mm -hmm. here in Greenberg, we live in a wonderful community. We have great educated um, neighbors and community members. But unless people are given the information and the tools, mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to do anything, mm -hmm. right? And so this program is all about that first step, that education, gauging what people know, teaching them a little bit about what they don't know, and then you know, offering them some tools um, at Anthony Veterans Pool on Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to 2, and then some additional resources that they can take home with them. And our hope is that you know, we're going to realize that if people have the tools and the information, then you know, their ability to do this, to change their behavior slightly, just, you know, instead of having one trash bin, you have three right next mm. to each other, and you just, you know, put things in a different trash bin. But, um, you know, it, it's really, it's something very important, and it's something that can't be done just by one person. The community has to come together and really try to do this as one entity. All right. Yeah. All right. So thank you, Emma, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to begin composting. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. And again, we are the Greenberg Zero Waste Initiative team signing off.